Okay, Michael, when you're ready, bring us into worship. Chose two different scriptures. Uh, Luke, could you bring this handheld mic up a little bit? Uh, I choose. I chose two different scriptures for our call to worship this morning. One comes out of uh, the Old Testament in Isaiah, the sixty-fourth uh, chapter and the sixth verse. But we are all as unclean things. And our righteousness is as filthy rags. And we all do fade as a leaf, and all our iniquities, like the wind, have taken us away. And then from 2 Timothy 3.16, something that's very important for this lesson today. All scripture is given by the inspiration of God and is profitable for doctrine or teaching for reproof, for correction, for instruction in righteousness. The word of God is the people of God. Thanks be to God. Well, once again, good morning, everybody. Good morning. God is good. All the time. So how about you stand, greet one another, however you want to do that, wave to one another, yell at one another. You can be loud, it's okay. Isn't it good to see everybody? So let's pray ourselves into the service this morning. Father, we just thank you for your goodness. Uh, Father, we thank you for uh, sparing us another day to live for you. And in the midst of all this craziness, to have the sanity of the word to be our God. And this morning we're going to talk about Praise and, and what it means and how that works in our lives and where we should be as people. And so, Father, I just ask that you would just uh, clear our minds and our hearts today 
and let this word go out with boldness. For it's in Christ's name we pray. Amen. Thank you. Maybe see. Are you guys hearing me? Because it feels like I'm not talking. It's all right. Yeah, it could be a little bit louder. They said. Well, at least Becky said. But for us, hard of hearing people. All right. How about some praises today? I, I do have a couple of praises I'd like to share with you guys. Um, uh, I don't know if all of you know. Uh, my wife's had some issues this week. Um, you know, I think I told y'all. I guess it was last week that she went for that procedure down in Pittsburgh, and everything went well. Which that is true. It did. Everything went well. Uh, but she had a reaction to that procedure. Um, Started on Monday and then on Tuesday. Um, got a little worse. We called down Pittsburgh. <laughs> they told us to uh, go have her checked, but don't allow them to do anything. <laughs> so I don't know how you do that, but anyhow, did you guys do you guys know that Trump Conway doesn't take in anything but trauma cases in their ER? They're that full. And so they're sending the other cases over to Wimber. Now think about this. Do you know how many ER rooms there are in Wimber? Five. Boy, I got an education. Uh, she spent eight hours in the hospital. I spent eight hours in the parking lot. Those poor nurses, doctors, they had nothing to do with it. Boy, they got blasted. And yet, I have to say, from what Sherry told me, they not only kept their composure, uh, but they were really, really nice. And so, what, you know, pray for those folks and for this, you know, whatever's going around in here. And so, just just keep that in prayer. There is a praise. Uh, what they thought was wrong with Sherry wasn't. They thought her liver was inflamed. This week, <clears throat> by video, I got to watch my granddaughter Taylor get sworn into the Air Force. Yeah, that's nice. Thank you. That is a moving experience. And um, as I was thinking about her, because when, when she's leaving her, I thought about Garrett, you know, he's facing right now. And uh, Andrew and Jared, they're the boys. Good, good. Good. Oh boy, keep keep all our servicemen and women in your prayers. You know, just just please do it. It's getting real personal. Other praises this morning. Tell me something good is going on. Carrie? Well, I want to praise God for my friend Linda over there who is having a birthday tomorrow. How about that? <laughs> You're 16. You're beautiful. All right. Well, we are going to go any further than 16, right, Linda? That's right. Okay, good. We're going to sing happy birthday to you regardless. Happy birthday to you. To Jesus be true. May God's richest blessing now rest upon you. Okay. All right. Any other praises this morning before we get to prayer requests? All right. Um, my grandson, Cruz, uh, was horsing around yesterday. Tell me if I'm getting this all right back, because I only got all this second. He was horsing around with his buddies yesterday after trick or treating, I think it was. Before. Before. Oh, okay. And so he jumped off of something. I don't know what, but he jumped off of something. And broke both of his arms. Oh, uh, So he's probably going to have to go to Pittsburgh tomorrow, right? Yeah, I'm going to have to see if they have, sur have, to have surgery because it's once pretty bad. 
So, boy, you know, keep, keep a little guy in first, huh? You know, I know accidents happen, you know, that kind of thing. But, uh, yeah, that's, you know, he's resilient and he'll be okay. But boy, that's, that's a tough one. That's a tough one. Um, Shirley cleared up some things for me in the first service. Because somebody had said uh, that uh, Lee Bassett Jr. had told him that there's nothing more they could do for him. Uh, she said, really what is going on there is this rash that he has, they don't know what it is and what to do about it. So that's what that, where that came from. So uh, please remember Lee. Um, of course, Irene, um, still waiting for the surgery type thing, you know, remember that. For uh, Margaret, for the election, are you praying about the election? I mean, are you really seriously? I mean, or are you just giving it like, yeah, I'm praying for it. I'm not praying for it. Uh, we really need to pray for that. I really, really believe that. Um, what else? Who else do we have to pray for today? Ken. staff, people don't show up, you're overworked, and you have to take that pressure home with you. And that has effect on everything else. So when we go to prayer today, when we go to prayer, April, I'm going to let you sit down now. But when we go to prayer, I want you to stand back up because we're going to pray for exactly what Karen said, and specifically you. I've been praying specifically for her. She asked me to. Josh and I talked about it. And I've been praying specifically every day for that woman. And everyone, like, you know, you like my daughter. And, you know, of course, April can't say what she knows, and you know, I can't say what I know, but you hear the rumors. Yeah. And people put their loved ones in nursing homes because they feel they don't have the capacity to care for them. And then when that happens, the staff are short staffed, then, then where, what happens? You know? Sure. Sure. Susie? I mean, anybody in the first responder business, you know, they, they, uh, uh, Luke, did you respond this morning or did you, you were at, was that wrecked up on 219? Somebody hit a deer, you know, at that time of year. But when he leaves that fire station, he don't got a clue what he's going to run into. You know, and, uh, you know, honestly, um, we were hunting last night and, and the whistle, the fire whistle blew a couple of different times and I know some of that was for trick or treat and all that. But every time that whistle blows anymore, I think about, I wonder what that's all about. I wonder who, you know, who's getting hurt, what happened, you know, and all that kind of stuff. And we do, we've got to do for our first responders. 
That week before you even ask, we should probably ask for something that else other than you. I'd ask for prayer for Becky. She's in a lot of pain. Um, you know, combination of things. The knees really bother her. I can relate to that. The weather's messing with her arthritis. I can relate to that. But, you know, when you have a surgery done that you think is going to take care of something and it doesn't take care of it, does that, does that exactly. sort of fit it? Mm -hmm. It's not only just the pain, it's just like blood <laughs> Okay, go ahead. So um, our good friend Robbie Springer um, was diagnosed with COVID, and he's got a lot of uh, medical issues. So we're extremely worried about him. He's uh, right now um, at home, staying away from his family, and he has mild symptoms, but who knows what sure. that's going to bring. So. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, my sister, Margaret Kramer, or Peg as we call her, she's, uh, she lost 27 pounds in a month without dieting. So they don't know what's going on yet. So. Uh, Zach's brother, Brock, told me yesterday, you know, he wrestles for UTJ. They got six members of that that wrestling team that have COVID. And, you know, Coach Cords had to suspend everything for right now. Now, I, not especially for young men and young women who are seniors this year that aren't going to get this opportunity back. You know, and I, I, it, it breaks my heart uh, to think about that. So, you know, everything associated with COVID. Huh? Okay. What else? Trace? Third is a special day for you. All right, for those of you on the phone, I know you didn't hear Trace. Uh, Jess is going to be induced into labor on election day. Um, this is a young lady, young single lady. She's got a lot on her plate. And uh, there's a lot of anxiety. And she has medical complications to start out with. And you've got parents that are just beside themselves. So keep that in prayer, too. What else? Susan? My sister-in-law's mom, would be my brother Robert's mother-in-law, has gotten COVID, and yesterday she was taken by ambulance to the hospital. Okay. He was involved in that, the church situation in Portage. Okay, for the church situation in Portage, I should talk about that. We need to pray for our sister churches. Mm -hmm. um, both Methodist churches and the Catholic church in Portage have been temporarily shut down. They've experienced COVID cases in both of them. Uh, that's a prayer, because there's more than that, but uh, it's also a praise, because God has allowed us to be spared, as far as I know. So, you know, but please pray for those churches, okay? Sure.
those of you on the phone, and uh, Katie, will you take pictures, please? Yeah, did I? Oh. <laughs> Why do we even bother talking to you? You're always ahead of me. Uh, for Ken. And once again, for these <coughs> nurses who are called to something and uh, are responsible to call. Uh, Linda, I saw your hand. those of you on the phone that didn't hear uh, for Dan, uh, Gert's your son for COVID. And then tomorrow, uh, she is going to be uh, back down to Pittsburgh to be tested again or see whatever they're going to do. And Randy, what day did you tell me? The 10th? Yeah. The 10th. Uh, Randy's going to have surgery. We've got to keep that in our first day. Mike. I'd like to ask for continued prayers for my father Paul, and I'd also like to ask for uh, prayers for myself as well. Um, I'm having a little bit of issue with work and also uh, a few other things in my life that are just working against me right now. So I'm asking for what's going on. You know what that means, Mike? That means you're trying to do something good. The devil don't play for you. Know, he keeps he's throwing he plays hard. Showing up to have to go. Uh, anybody else? Um, unspoken. Uh, yeah, sure. Just pile them. Once again, I, I like to go to the altar to pray. You pray whatever uh, way is comfortable for you to sit. Good morning, Father. This has been a season uh, where we need to pray and we need to praise. And uh, Father, there has been joy in your, your house this morning, and we shared the blessings of praise. And uh, there has been a lot of prayer requests because we are people in a lot of need. And so, Father, I just ask for a, a, a blessing on the prayers, rest, blessing on the praises, and the assurance that we're hearing these <laughs> prayers heard. As our country is in the middle of a turning point, uh, I, I pray we as people called to follow Jesus Christ honor the commitment of, of the privilege to vote. And also with that privilege, know why we vote and what we're voting for. And your word tells us that you're on top of things. And nothing happens without you allowing it to happen. But you use people to be your instruments. We got folks in the armed services who need our prayers. We got folks in the, uh, the nursing homes. April, will you please stand? Right now we just reach out to April and everybody who is in the same position as her. Father, we would just ask that there would be a, just an extra measure of grace upon their lives, that you would give them a strength that they don't have strength for, that you would give them a willingness, even when it feels like I don't even want to do this anymore. Strengthen her family. Strengthen her faith. Till one day this, this nightmare goes away. And Father, for all the unspoken requests, um, the things that are on our hearts, for the word today, and that you would just, your spirit would abide with us mightily. And as we begin to prepare our hearts for worship, uh, let us do so with that prayer that you taught your disciples. Our Father, which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. 
Thy kingdom come, and thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not to temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. We're going to have a very unusual children's sermon this morning. So could our children come forward for the children's sermon this morning? Come on up here. Amen. Our children's sermon this morning is going to be given by Ian. Thank you for these young folks. And I look forward for the day when the salt are spilled again with young people. But until then, remember what these words of Jesus taught us. That God makes all the difference in the world. And we give you the praise. In Christ's name we pray. Amen. So there's stuff here for you guys. So you're in charge, everybody. There's, there's three. And that's three of you. Good job. Hey, here's papers up here. You're slacking, man. After I told you, good job. <laughs> to say the least, uh, we had an interesting Sunday school, didn't we, not Heather? Yeah. Yeah. Now, here's my challenge. If Ian can do a children's message, so can you. Don't leave that all up to me, okay? Uh, if you feel called of God to do something, you all can do so. Amen? That was good, Ian. Thank you. All right. Um, I, I chose words from Jesus again today. Um, I titled this sermon Talking Rocks. You know, I'll try to explain it as we go along. It comes from the Gospel of Luke, the 19th chapter, and I'm going to be reading 37 through uh, 44. So uh, I hope you brought your Bibles, and if you did, I hope to ask you to open up to Luke 19. And let us not forget who we are. Uh, let's stand if we can. If you can't, that's okay. 
But if you can't, you have the ability to do that in reverence to the word. Just a little prelude to the to the scripture today. We'll talk about that more in detail in just, just a little bit. But in prelude, this is the point of time in the ministry of Jesus Christ where he is coming into Jerusalem for the very last time. It's what we call uh, Palm Sunday. So, verse 37. And when he was come nigh, even at the descent of Mount of Olives, the whole multitude of the disciples began to rejoice and praise God with a loud voice for all the mighty works that they had seen, saying, Blessed be the King that cometh in the name of the Lord. Peace in heaven and glory in the highest. And some of the Pharisees from among the multitude said unto him, Master, rebuke or stop your disciples. And he answered and said unto them, I tell you that if these should hold their peace, the stones would immediately cry out. And when he was come near, he beheld the city, and he wept over her, saying, If thou hast known even thou, at least in thy day, the things which belong unto the, thy peace, but now they are hid from thy eyes. For the day shall come upon thee, that thy enemies shall cast a trench about thee, and compass thee around, and keep thee on every side. And they shall lay thee even with the ground, and thy children with thee, and they shall not leave in thee one stone upon another, because thou knowest not the time of thy visitation. Let's pray. Father, just ask that you would take and rightly divide this word with you. I'm praying for all of those that are here, all of those that wish they could be, and all of those that should be. And Father, we just ask today that this word be mighty and bold, and that you would take this sinner one more time and just, just, just carve me out like a pumpkin, and take all that junk that's inside of me and out of me, and fill it with the void that can only be filled with the Holy Spirit, so that nothing is said here today that would be contrary to your word, that would put doubt in anybody's heart, would allow Satan a foothold in our lives and hurt anybody by bad teaching. We're going to talk about the cross today, Father. Let that cross be our deciding point in life. And we'll give you the praise. For it's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Thank you. May be seated. A few years ago, and I'm sure most of you remember this, the, word, the initials, WWJD, was just about like everywhere, wasn't it? You know, everybody, there was bracelets, there was this, there was that. You know, of course, that stood for, what would Jesus do? And as I, I thought about this scripture this week, you know, in my mind, I thought, you know, if, if Jesus was here today, he is, by the way, you all know that, don't you? But, you know, if he was here physically and he would stop at the top of that hill out there and look down at this community, what would he say? What would be his reaction as he came in? Would he hear praise from God's people? Or would our praise as the people of God succumb to the pressures of society and the culture that we live in, and it would be so small that he would have to command the rocks to praise him. Would he weep over the conditions that he sees us in? Or would our eyes be so blinded by sin that we could not even see the future ahead of us. Have you ever felt like life's passed you by? You ever feel that way? You know, you wake up one day and your kids are grown. Your grandkids aren't kids anymore. And you, you, you look back and you think, how? You know, Becky just said that when Zach walked past, we said, how? How is it possible that he's that big? You know? 
don't you feel like like you miss something? You know? And I don't know whether it's my age or what's happening in my life or whatever it is. You know, I, I find myself feeling that way more and more. And I look back through my life, if you guys, you know, maybe you can do that too. I look back through my life and I, I, I see times when God gave me an opportunity to do Jesus talk. And I kept silent. And God had to find another way for that message of the gospel to get out other than me. Does that make sense to everybody? Like a missed opportunity in life that you're not going to get back. I think today, let's not be the people that did not speak Jesus in a culture that desperately needed him. So that Jesus had to speak the gospel in a way by a person, by even a rock, that wasn't intended to be the person. So let's talk about this scripture just a little bit before we get to points that I want to talk to you about. Jesus has just entered into Jerusalem. He's just there. The cross is a week away. Those who were his disciples, his followers, they're singing. They're praising. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. They're taking their, their cloaks, their, their garments, and they're spreading them and cast with that donkey. And they're taking palm branches off, off and, and laying them in front of him. But while this is going on, there are powers to be that are trying to silence that prayer, that praise. And Jesus tells that group of people that the gospel cannot be stopped. The gospel of Jesus Christ cannot be stopped. That even if these people would not be praising me, if there was nothing but silence, he could command the rock speak out. I, I, now, I don't want to take things out of context here. But I was thinking, wouldn't it have been something if there would have been nothing but silence? And Jesus would have said to the rocks, talk. I just think that would be so amazing to have been there and seen rocks talk and sing the praises of Jesus Christ. Well, anyhow, there were, when he comes to Jerusalem, excuse me, he comes to Jerusalem, he looks down in that city, that city is called the city of David, a city that, that had biblical worth, godly worth, and he looks down at that city and he begins to cry. And his tears were tears of sadness, of what that city had become and how they had turned away from God and how it wouldn't have had to be that way. And then there's this, this really terrible, I don't know if you got when I read that, that, that just absolutely terror of this province. We all know that sin has a price tag. You say that. Jesus said, because you have turned away from me, there's going to be pain, there's going to be suffering, there's even going to be death that did not need to be. Now, I realize this happened 2,000 plus years ago in a culture that was completely and totally different than ours. I understand that. But there are so many similarities in this scripture to what's going on today. There's three things I want to talk to you about this morning. One is praise, whether it's people or whether it's rocks, whatever it is, it's praise. The second is tears. And the last is music. Let's begin with praise. 
So Luke records Jesus going into Jerusalem. And in the praise side of things, we call that Palm Sunday, by the way, and in the praise side of things, there's three ways that this praise has happened. First, people praise. It's, it's what we do on Sunday morning, you know? Like, we, we offer a time of praise and prayer. Are, are, are you totally negative? Answer me, please. Are you lying? Okay, so what do we have to do? I mean, if, unless you want to go nuts, what do you have to do? You have to have some optimism in your life. If all you are is negative, that's where you're going to be. You have to find things in life. I don't care if you're spending an afternoon with your grandson getting attacked by a grouse. Or listening to uh, Ian in Sunday school. That's an experience all of you felt. <laughs> just coming into fellowship with God's people and hearing the praise it's supposed to be. Does that all make sense to you? There is still good in the world, amen? Amen. All right, so. I don't know, I'm aware of that. All right, we cannot afford to make the gospel say something that it doesn't. That just isn't allowed. But this, this gospel message that's in this text today, to me it's almost eerie. The similarities about what was happening in ancient e uh, Israel and what's happening in our culture today. No matter how hard, doesn't it seem, doesn't it seem that when you try to tell Jesus to somebody. That you have Jesus talk. You want to talk about something that's happened in your life that you're going to give credit to Jesus. Or, you know, something, you know, there's always seems to be some power somewhere that wants to keep that talk quiet. Did you ever notice that? It happens in my family. It happens in your family. It happens in the workplace. It happens in the schools. There is a power out there that does not want anybody to know who Jesus is and what he has done. And there's this unseen battle going on. I believe this unseen battle, Paul nailed in Ephesians, the 6th chapter, the 12th verse. I'm going to read it to you. We wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, powers, rulers of darkness of this world, spiritual wickedness in high places. I do not know if you believe in the true Jesus. I do. I believe there is an evil out there that is a spiritual evil, and it affects us on every day. There's a battle out there that can't be won just by human means. And if you have any means of common sense at all in you, you know that that's true. Everything that you do, you know, you go through this, this, this human instruction manual, you know, and if you do this, 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 and this is going to happen, you know, and everything that you try to do, it only gets worse. You know, listen to these candidates that run for president, and they're making all these promises. If you believe any of those people can fix what they're saying they're going to fix on their own, my goodness gracious. But there are battles that can only be won with Jesus Christ. We're at the point in the gospel story where the cross is just around the corner. Listen, my friends, if you miss the cross, you miss the victory. That's all there is to it. As terrible as the cross was, and it was, the fruit of the cross is praise. Because you're sitting here redeemed today by the cross of Jesus Christ and what happened on that cross. It was terrible. But you're sitting here today with that praise. There is no power. When Jesus Christ comes into your heart, 
There is no power that can separate the praise of salvation that's in you. Even if you fail to praise him as you should, he will find another way to get the gospel out. Secondly, there's tears. Jesus comes to Jerusalem. He cries over that city. He says it didn't have to be this way. What he saw was a city that turned away from God. Tears only come in one of two ways. What are they? All I heard was muttering, but I'll, I'll believe you that this is right. Yeah, they're either tears of happiness or they're tears of sadness. That's the only way tears come. Jesus shed tears of sadness when we look at this. When was the last time you shed tears? No, seriously. When was the last time, what is that board back there? Put right here. When was the last time, I mean, you cry over the effect of sin has had on you, has had on your family, has had on your community, has had on your nation. I mean, sat down and cried. How many of you know that that uh, that commercial with, uh, I guess it's Liberty Mutual, you know, where there's that Doug and the Emu guy, and they're playing they're playing volleyball, and he's trying to tell the Emu, you know, when I spike it, you know, you blah 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 blah, and he turns around. And the emu has his head in the sand. You know, you know, church, we better get our head out of the sand. You know, if you can't cry over what sin has done, there's only one thing there that it is. That's because your heart has become so hard, you just can't cry anymore. Karen, years and years and years ago, I had a conversation with your daughter, Elizabeth. At that time, Elizabeth was working at the ER in the hospital. And she said to me, I have to get out of here. Because I see the same things day in and day out, and they're starting not to affect me anymore. My heart's getting hard. You know what I'm afraid of in our culture? I'm afraid we've heard... We've heard and seen sin so often that it don't bother us anymore. How about it? I mean, you know, you, you turn on the TV, you look at the news, and there's there's all these terrible things that happen every day. You read the newspaper, and it's not some country out there. It's right here. And it's happened so many different times that we don't even bother us anymore. We can't cry anymore over it because our hearts have become so, so hard. But the word of God tells us that he can take a heart of stone and make it talk and give it flesh and change you when you speak praise to him. Lastly, the future. Jesus speaks to the future of Jerusalem and it's not a good word. The real tragedy there is Jesus said it didn't have to be that way. Future, I guess, has always been on my mind. I've always wondered about what's going to happen. And I guess I've always wondered that. But in the last, um, in the last year, things have changed so fast and so drastically, haven't they? I mean, I find my—I don't know whether it's my age or it's just that everything's going on. I'm not so concerned about my future because I know who holds my future. But for those two over there, and those sitting in that pew, and those sitting in that pew, I just got to wonder what kind of world are they going to grow up in? What does the future hold for them? You know, are they going to be able? to be blessed the way I have been blessed living here in this place. You know, 
that future, when I look at it, it seems almost as grim as this Jesus prophecy over Jerusalem. And my friends, i got to tell you, there's more than COVID going on here. There's a darkness I've never felt before. And I believe if the church doesn't wake up, the darkness is just going to get worse. And that starts with me and that starts with you. Conclusion, I'm almost done. That decision begins with us. So what's it going to be for us, guys? Is the Jesus talk praise? Is it going to come out of us? Or is God going to have to talk to the office and tell him to talk? Because I'm just going to talk Jesus anymore. And only you can make that decision. And I pray today, as our nation's at a cornerstone, their future, their future, their future. That we would be the church. I don't care who you vote for. I don't want you to be influenced by me. I don't want you to be influenced. How many of you would just be seriously glad when the commercials go away? <laughs> I want you to be influenced by this. Because that's the truth in this world. So what's it going to be? We're going to talk to Jesus. Simple way to talk to Jesus. These guys are making soup down there. I don't know how many of you are delivering soup. If you're not, get to it. Quit talking about being the church and be the church. Somebody needs, somebody needs you today. I need you today. Jesus needs you. Let your heart be so hard that you can't even cry any longer. Let's pray, Father. Thank you. Thank you for the word today. I pray that it's been a good word. If we need a heart adjustment, this is the place to have. Let your heart be the voice of Jesus today. Let's make a difference in this world. It starts with us. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Okay, can you play? Thank you. Go in peace. Go in joy. Go in love. Go downstairs and get some soup. Okay? Take a little Jesus. May the Lord watch between me and thee, while we're out, one from the other. Why don't you stand up? May God bless you, surround you, teach you, and to trust you. Thank you, Mike, for playing today. Thank you, Karen, for playing today. Ian. Thank you for doing the message today. Amen. It's been a good day to be in church, huh? Remember how we do this. You guys up first, and then just from the front to the back.